In this lecture, we'll talk briefly about unionized labor. Employees who are dissatisfied with the working conditions where they're at or with their compensation have to figure out how to negotiate with management to bring about the changes they're looking for. Dealing with management on, a, on an individual basis, however, is not always effective. So employees may organize themselves into labor unions to deal with employers and to achieve better pay. Hours and working conditions are also part of the negotiation strategy. Organized employees are backed by the power of a large group that can hire specialists to represent the entire union in its dealings with management. Union workers make significantly more than non-union employees for that reason. They have the negotiation, negotiating power to come up with a better deal. The United States has a roughly 11.3% unionization rate. On average, the, man, the median usual weekly earnings of unionized full-time and salary workers are about $200 more than their non-union counterparts. That's on a weekly basis. However, union growth has slowed in recent years and the prospect for growth, growth in the unionized workforce does not look good. One reason is that most blue collar workers, the traditional union members, have already been organized. Nonetheless, labor unions have been successful in organizing blue collar manufacturing, government and healthcare workers, as well as smaller percentages of employees in other industries. Consequently, significant aspects of HRM, particularly compensation, are dictated to a large degree by union contracts. Many companies are bound by such union contracts in various parts of their business. Collective bargaining is the negotiating process through which management and unions reach an agreement about compensation, about working hours and working conditions for the bargaining unit. The objective of negotiation is to reach agreement about a labor contract. This is the formal written document that spells out the relationship between the union and management for a specified period of time, usually two to three years. In collective bargaining, each side tries to negotiate the agreement, the agreement that meets the demands, meets its demands, and try to compromise as much as little as possible, but often or always some compromise is necessary. Many labor unions contain a cost of living escalator or adjustment, a COLA, cost of living adjustment cause, which calls for automatic wage increases during periods of inflation to protect, protect the real income of employees. Real is the uh, uh, inflation adjusted income. During tough economic times, unions may be forced to accept givebacks, that is some wages and benefit concessions that are made to employers to allow them to remain competitive or in some cases to survive and to continue to provide jobs for union workers. Sometimes management and labor simply cannot agree on a contract. Most labor disputes are handled through collective bargaining or through grievance procedures. When these processes break down, however, either side may resort to more drastic measures to achieve objectives. For example, picketing is a public protest against management practices and involves union members marching, often waving anti-management signs and placards at the employee's plant or work site. Strikes is when employees walk out as one of the most effective weapons that labor has. It is strikes is when People just refuse to work, so the plant no longer can produce its product or services. By striking, a union makes the normal operations of the business difficult at best and sometimes impossible. Strikes receive widespread publicity and they remain a weapon of the last resort. A boycott is an attempt to keep people from purchasing the, purchasing the products of a company who is not negotiating. In a boycott, union members are asked not to do business with the boycotted organization. Some unions may even impose fines on members who ignore the boycott. You can also ask other unions representing other labor types to also avoid uh, uh, doing, their, doing business with uh, the organization that is in negotiations. Like labor, management also has negotiating tactics. 
uh, their version of a strike is called a lockout. That's when management actually closes a work site so that employees cannot go to work. Lockouts are used as a general rule only when a union strike has already partially shut down a plant and it seems less expensive for the plant to go completely dark. Strike breakers, called scabs by striking union members, are people hired by management to replace striking employees. Managers uh, managers hire strike breakers to continue operations and reduce losses that are associated with the strikes and to show the unions that they will not bow to their demands. Strike breaking is generally a last resort measure by management in the same way that a strike is a last resort by the unions themselves. Management and union members normally reach mutually agreeable decisions without outside assistance. Sometimes, however, uh, even after lengthy negotiations, strikes, lockouts, and other tactics, tactics, management and labor cannot resolve a contract dispute. In such cases, they have three choices, conciliation, mediation, and arbitration. Conciliation brings in a neutral third party to keep labor and management talking. Like conciliation, mediation involves bringing in a third party, a neutral third party, but the mediator's role is to suggest or propose a solution to the problem. With arbitration, a neutral third party is brought in to settle the dispute, but the arbitrator's solution is legally binding and enforceable. Occasionally, management and labor submit to compulsory arbitration in which an outside party, usually the federal government, requests arbitration as a means of a prolong, eliminating a, provon, a prolonged strike that is threatening to dislike, disrupt the economy, like for example with a transportation system or something like that. Uh, in the next lecture, we'll talk about some of these issues in a broader context when we talk about in the last lecture the future of human resource management and some of those trends and issues.